your reaction to the main event tonight? Gegard Mousasi retaining his title. I mean, I think, he, you know, John Salter's a tough guy, great wrestler. And um, I just think Gegard's experience took over. I think conditioning took over a certain point, and uh, he did what he had to do. I think that uh, uh, he's been out for a while with uh, some inactivity, which is uh, something that I think we're going to pick up the, the speed for his next fight, try to get him in here right away. Uh, hopefully in the next few months, not a few months, but you know, several months. But um, I, I look forward to getting him back in the cage as soon as possible, as soon as Austin's ready. Yeah, and I was going to say that matchmaking is evident. Usually uh, you say, oh, we got to go back and talk to the team and you know, spend the next couple of days discussing options. But you guys had your mind set. Well, what is it about Austin? How, how did he you know, earn this title shot, I sort of speak? I mean, look at his performances here. I think uh, you know, he's, he's earned the right to be in that, sp uh, be in that uh, shot to get the title shot. So let's see, what, let's see how it goes. I mean, hopefully he's you know, going to be okay towards the end of the year, beginning of next year. But we're ready to, to put that fight together when he's ready. This card uh, had only had eight fights, but I feel like it pretty much delivered from top to bottom. Was there anything else that stood out to you on, on this card tonight? I mean, Stotts, wow. I mean, wow. That kid is amazing. So he fought a tough, 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 you know, Magomedov. And, uh, and, and to me, I, I think he clearly won, you know. So, um, you know, I, I know sooner or later people are going to start as, talking about or, or talk, uh, whispering about the 35-pound tournament. I think it's more and more likely that we're going to head in that direction. And we got some great 135s. And maybe next year that'll be the division. But man, when it, when you see perform, performances like that from uh, uh you know from Stotts, I, I was really really impressed. The co-main event, your former champion Andre Koroshkov is back in the mix finally. Uh, you have a lot of Russian fighters that are that are asking to be on that card in Moscow. Are you gonna you gonna be able to to fulfill all those uh, requests? Uh, the answer is no, because there's too many there's too many. We have too many great Russian fighters, honestly. And and uh, but we'll do our best to accommodate as many as we can um and it's really important to them and i and i and i feel that when i talked to them and the managers and sat down with uh alexi this weekend and sat down with shomenko you know who wants to to fight there as well because you know he's a legend in the, in the bellator ranks and uh he's been here a long time currently he's not in the contract but you know when i first came on board he was he was the guy and and uh you know him and koreshkov were were the one two in Min minikov at that time so um you know, before I got here, they had a great Russian uh, contingency of fighters. We've just beefed it up and took it to a whole nother level. And uh, you know, we'll we'll probably announce the rest of that Russian card in the next week, and and then it's going to be a f fun event. It's possible. I mean, the only the only thing I told Lexi, just to be honest, is that the timing is tough because it's so late in the game. Like if you would have came to me two three months ago. Uh, but, you know, the, the reason why, like, for instance, like, Kreshkov hasn't been here fighting or uh, Alexi's guys is that, um, you know, it's the visa issue trying to get him in, into the country. So we've been able to get some of the Russian athletes here and some we have not been able to get here. So, uh, you know, timing, I haven't seen Alexi and this is the first time I ran to him. So, you know, we haven't talked about Russia, but now that Russia is real, um, you know, this is not going to be the last time we go to Moscow. So I said, just be patient. We'll try to do what we can and we'll stay in touch. Scott, congratulations on another tremendous show. Talk about the crowd for a second. We've been here with Mohegan Sun. I think it's like 20 in a row. Yeah. I've never heard Mohegan Sun louder from the very first prelim all the way to the main event. Talk about the crowd for a second. It felt great. And, you know, remind me of L.A. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. I mean, to have people in the building, it just it just feels great. And, and I, I was telling somebody earlier, I said, you know, you forget how important the fans are until they're there. Like last week and this week, it's like um, you start thinking that, you know, this is, is this, this is, you forget how this should be the way that it feels, right? This, should, this, should, this is how it should feel. Yeah. And, and I think that you, you get so into doing our events and producing it for TV and having a no audience situation like uh, for the last 18 months. So to come back and have, this is the first time we set up a real ringside area and a real, you know, uh, you know fans on the floor. Uh, so you know, uh, to me, it's it's uh, it's a great feeling, and 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 I, and I love it. Yeah, I agree. Totally added to the night. I'm glad you just mentioned the LA card. I got to ask you about AJ McKee. Obviously, he, Star Wars born that night. You've been saying you believe he's the best 145 pounder on the planet. I want to ask you. He's also number one in your pound for pound rankings. Is he just mm -hmm. the best fighter? Period. Regardless of weight class. Yeah, I think that uh, I think he's earned that right. I mean, Pitbull is. Uh, you know, a legend here at Bellator and in mixed martial arts. And he was ranked pound for pound. And, you know, 
I, I take my hat off, hats off to AJ, my hat off to AJ because he took care of business. And you know, it's he, he he told me a week before the fight, or maybe the week of the fight, he said, "This is going to be an easy fight, Coker." Yeah. I said, "Really?" I, I go, "Really?" Like he goes, oh, "No, it's going to be an easy fight. Trust me." And and he was really confident and went out and he took care of business. So to me, he 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 walks the talk. And until somebody dethrones that kid, I think he's. Uh, you know, the greatest fighter at 145 and pound for pound, the best in our, in our, in our company. What about the whole world? Do you think he's the best in the whole world? I do. I mean, who's going to beat him? Yeah, I mean, you guys are reporters. You guys know all the fighters. Who's going to beat this kid? <laughs> yeah, he, he is that good. So, um, you know, I think that uh, when, 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 I, when I first saw him fight years ago, you know, I, I, I saw something in this kid, saw a lot of potential in him, and he had a little swagger, had a little, you know, gift of gab and could – you know, he, he had he had that it factor and, and he has developed into a big star and you, you guys saw it the other night and the way he fought Pitbull man was, you know, listen, it's it's it, it's very rare that you see such a dominant performance in such a big fight like that. Right. So um, it, it just it was it was his night. And, and my last question, we talk about, you know, grabbing a star right at the beginning, like you did to AJ and build them all the way through. I got to ask you yesterday, you tweeted out. To NCAA training NCAA champion Gable Stevens, now Olympic gold medalist Gable Stevenson. Uh, Stevens, uh, any chance are you flirting with him, or is this a, you really could pursue him? Well, I, I can tell you this: that um, we've already been in touch with his management. I do know that he has a couple of years left of school, wants to go back and wrestle. So there's there's dialogue going on, um, but I think he really wants to wrestle right now. But if he wants to come to MMA, we'd love to have him here. I think nobody builds athletes from like say the wrestling. Uh, or, or build them from ground up the way that we do. I think we're the best at it, and uh, I think it would be a great home for him. Uh, there was a lot of disappointment that we didn't get the Legends versus Legends fight with Fedor, but, you know, okay, JDS, um, you know, Overeem are, are still available. Is there still a possibility they could come to, to Bellator, or is that unlikely at this point? I mean, you know what, to me, we have so many fighters under contract. Uh, if there's a necessity for it, like if Fader would have said, oh, I want to fight this guy or that guy, then we would have probably put it together. But, um, you know, Fader uh, wanted to fight Tim. And uh, this was, like I said in the, a couple of interviews, I said this is something that he decided, um, I think, in his mind when he, Modalski fought here and, and Tim fought Modalski. And he came to me and he said, look, I want to I want to fight Tim if he beats Modalski. And I want to fight for the interim belt against Tim. So in his mind, I think he planted the seed there. And you can't blame him. I mean, Tim's ranked number two or three uh, in Bellator. And so, you know, he wants to test himself and continue to, uh, you know, fight, fight the top guys. So that, that's something that's going to be up to him. The other guys, listen, you know, every, they've all had great runs, you know, while these guys are legends. And if, if we, you know, decide to have a fight or two, uh, you know, it might happen, but we'll see how it goes. A lot of people were disappointed when Yoel Romero, you know, didn't get his debut for the Grand Prix. Now, he didn't clear medicals. He cleared them now. Could you give any details on why he was able to clear them now? What changed or is just kind of just one state's medical testing to another was the difference? Yeah, I mean, that's something I think you'll have to ask him and his management, you know, because that's really between them and the Athletic Commission. So, uh, but I've heard that he's cleared and, and obviously we wouldn't have booked him if he wasn't. So he's good to go. We have a great fight in San Jose, which I'm really excited about because uh, you know, San Jose is such a great fight town. We've had such great events there uh, in the past uh, with Strike Force and with Bellator. Uh, it's going to be, uh, I think it's been two years since we've been back, so I'm really excited about that fight. And Yoel and, uh, and Phil is going to be a, a great matchup. So, uh, I, I, you know, I'm looking forward to that. Hey, Scott, congratulations on a great run and a great cap off to uh, Mohegan's son. Listen, I got a two-part question. Jake Hager's been asking for a fight, you know, and he's got the AEW, everything rolling. Mm -hmm. You know, when are we going to see him fight next? And my second part is Charlie Campbell, amazing performance last time. Are we going to see more of him? Yeah, with Jake, you know, um, you know, really, it's up to him. We've been working around his wrestling schedule because, you know, he's been doing such a great job at, uh, at, the, at the wrestling company. And so I, I think that, you know, when I last time I reached out to uh, my guys to reach out to him, I think he said at the end of the year, unless the Fedor fight was available. And if the Fedor fight was available, he, he would love to fight it, fight Fedor uh, in Moscow. I think that would have been a crazy promotion, you know, and uh, I don't know how, you know, great of a fight it would be, but it would be a great promotion. But, you know, one thing when you deal with heavyweights, man, you never know because one punch, that's all it takes, you know, whether, 
you know, the guy's ranked one through 10 or not ranked, or he's a, just a big guy or pro wrestler. I mean, Jake's got skills, um, but it would have been interesting. But Fedor just said, look, I, I want to fight the top ranked guy, and that's the direction I want to head. So. Yeah, I'm not really too familiar with that, so I'll have to get back to you. Hi, Scott. Thanks for the time today. Uh, I saw that the UFC parted the ways of Kai Kamaka. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a familiar face. Uh, he's fought for Bellator. Are you interested at all in resigning him? Yeah, I think I think my guys are talking to uh, Brian and see if they can put something together. I'm not sure, but you know, that's that's something that uh, we'll know in the next week or two. Mm -hmm. And with Stutz versus Pettis on the horizon, do you think we might see Bellator in Milwaukee? You know, that's a possibility. We definitely uh, had that conversation um, to, to come do a fight in uh, Milwaukee with the venue there. Um, that's a possibility, but um, we'll see. All right, Scott, that was the last one. Thanks. Thanks for the time. Thanks, guys. Recording stopped.